Hi, Jim Hebel with Bedecker Plastics, and I'm here with another short technical talk about advanced thermoplastic polymers. Today's topic is all about achieving flatness in machine plastic parts. And this topic may be very beneficial for you machinists out there or for engineers or buyers looking to better understand the challenges in holding a flatness call out. I will touch on the proper way to approach machining a plastic sheet so that you have the best possible chance for obtaining flatness in your machine plastic parts. Sometimes an engineer might have a certain component that they have designed and now they are looking for someone to machine that particular component. And now they are encountering frustration. Frustration because they are having trouble sourcing a truly flat part to their tolerance requirements. Or maybe the machine shop is having the frustration actually getting a flat part off their machine. In the past, I've talked about stresses in plastic stock shapes. A part like this would be machined from a raw plate like this. And the challenge with any stock shape, plate for sure, is the fact that there is some level of stress in that plate. When machining into the plate and you start cutting some of those features like you saw from that part, energy gets released and the part will start to move. One of the ways that it often moves is to bow, warp, even twist. One of the critical steps early in the machining process is to know that you must start with a flat plate to begin with. Machinists will often tell you that all raw plate stock has a little bit of camber in it when they buy it. And that's true. It's just a fact of dealing with stock shapes. You are going to have this with any plastic plate, rod, even tube. There will always be some amount of warpage in the stock shape. What many machinists will do is they'll clamp the plate flat to their work surface and they'll force it down flat. They may use a vacuum table, which is quite common, and suck the plate down flat. Then they'll say, okay, there I am, I'm starting with a flat plate. Well, this just is not true and not the answer to a flat machined part. Plastics have a memory and if you force them down flat, especially a raw plate, then do all your machining, when you release it, the part will simply spring back. It'll go back to that cambered state and you will have a finished machined part, which is not flat. So you need to start with a flat plate to begin with. You actually have to machine the plate flat to start. How do you do that? Well, you find the belly of the plate and you position the plate belly up. You don't force it down, you grip the plate from the edges. You can also use double face tape, but only use it on the corners so you keep the belly up and not forced down. Once you have the plate belly up, then you mill or machine the belly off and the result is a nice flat surface. Then you can flip the plate onto that flat surface, machine the other side, and you have a truly flat plate to start with. Now you can properly fixture. Now you can clamp it down, use that vacuum table, holding the plate flat for machining. And you will be much better off yielding a truly flat finish machine component. Then, when you start machining, there are a few other tips that you need to be aware of. When you can, as you machine, take equal amounts off of both sides. Polymers love that symmetry during the machining process. Also, keep the part cool during machining. Use proper water-soluble coolants. Use the right machining cutters. Use the right feeds, the right speeds, and numerous other best practices that are critical for machining plastics. But the key is to start with a flat plate to begin with. The same goes for machining rod or tube you may need to machine those shapes flat. In other words, machine away any camber, just like I described for the plate. All of this will yield a much better chance of success for holding your parts flat right off the machine and hitting your desired machining dimensions and tolerances. Please feel free to add your comments, like and share this video if you found it helpful. If you have any questions or concerns related to flatness, I will certainly try to address them. As always, thanks for watching.